Oh, does this area look good? But it's about to look a whole lot better. And we're about to add in a whole lot more function too, because I wanna go ahead and add in a single item filter into the system here. And we'll explain what that is, how it works and how to make it. But first, I need to get some materials together. I need some things to be able to make it. We maybe need to prep this area a little bit more. Um, and I need the oh so famous sub to prowl diamonds. So I'm about to do a live stream. I don't know if I record any clips during the live stream for this or not. It depends on what we do, but I'm going to go ahead, get me a little bit of lunch, kick it live. And then on the other side of that, we'll be doing we'll be doing some recording. We'll be getting together this item filter and you guys are going to love it. All right, I had the opportunity to do a little bit of resource gathering, making a redstone components and everything, and I got them in a chest over there. Uh, but now we're kind of at a point where we need to get this area prepared first. So I think the first thing I need to decide is like, what do I want the area to look like? How separated do I want everything to be? Kind of like I've done the rest of the season. It doesn't all need to be completely compact. It can be, and I'm going to show you how to do it that way, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So let me clear out some of this area because I think I want some chests here and some chests here. And let me see, let me see exactly where we end up. Okay, so I'm separating my chest out just because I like the look of that better, just for the aesthetic of the area. But you don't have to do that. You can have chest on top of chest, on top of chest, on top of chest. It can literally be as tall or as short as you want it to be. It could be a single chest, it could be 20 chests high. It doesn't matter, okay? But we're gonna fill in with hoppers everywhere that we have a chest and just in a way to connect the hoppers generally, right? So if we do this, this, and this, just like we explained in the last episode, as the items come through here and go down, they're gonna travel down this hopper line. Um, we do need a hopper line, oops. Actually, we need two hopper lines facing in this direction. So one of them actually needs to face forward so what we're going to do is I'm just going to put some temporary blocks right here. They're just temporary, right? And then we're going to face a hopper forward on each one of these, just like this. We do need hoppers facing in this direction too. Um, I don't have my hopper pack on. Let me turn that on to make it easier for you guys. Okay, there we go. So you can see via the arrow that all of these are going this way. No problem. And that these ones are all facing forward because you can see the stem facing forward. That's fine. Now we're just going to fill in hoppers facing forward into all these locations. Again, whether you have one chest or 20 chests going down in a row, a hopper faces forward into all of them just the same. And if you skip a row like I did right here, which is fine, I did skip a row, then that's fine. You don't need... Um, technically, I don't need this hopper. I could take that one out. Um, and I don't need hoppers here since I'm not going into chests. Okay, so this is the part where for each one of these lines, you're going to do the same thing all the way across, okay? So what we're going to do is you see our hopper that's facing forward, not into a chest. One block below that, we're going to put a block, okay? And here, I changed what kind of block that I used just so you guys can see it a little bit easier too. Um, and then right above diagonal of that, let me knock this one out. You're going to put another block right there. Okay. Beside that block, you're going to put a piece of glass, a glass block. And then down below that block, you're going to put another solid block just like this. So block, 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 block. Okay. Now we're going to get ourselves up here and we are going to put a comparator. We're going to use comparators, repeaters, redstone dust and redstone torches in this segment, okay? So we're gonna have a redstone repeater facing right here out of that hopper. And then we're gonna put redstone dust, redstone dust, redstone dust, one, two, three, just like that. We're gonna add in another block below this one right there, just like that. A repeater can go here and a redstone torch can go right here. Now we're gonna end up repeating this exact same thing all the way down and I'm gonna show you the easy way to do it. But first I wanna show you exactly how this works, okay? So this repeater is reading for items inside of this hopper, which there are none right now, okay? Since there's nothing in there, it's not turned on. Meaning that, that this redstone torch is turned on because there's no kind of power turning it off. And then this repeater right there is turned on. This block right here has power because that repeater is going into it. And you can see that hopper right there. See the little bit of red with my texture pack. That's telling me that that hopper is turned off. No items can go through it. That means if there was an item in here, it cannot go in because that hopper's turned off. So 
how do we turn that hopper on? Well, we need a signal strong enough to reach all the way to here to then turn this torch off, turn this off, no power to that block and unlock that hopper. Hopefully that makes sense. So to get our redstone signal going across, first of all, we need to put something in these reserve slots. These slots, we don't want anything that could possibly be going through the system to go in. And it's a proven fact that your storage system and your farm gets 196% better if you use sub to prowl diamonds. So make sure you mine for sub to prowl diamonds, put them as your item filter item and your farm will automatically work a whole lot faster. I promise you it works. You just got to try it. Okay. I just wanted to emphasize one thing to everybody that I'm inserting after the fact because I was watching the footage back. I didn't want people to get confused. In these reserve item slots, you can put any item that stacks up to 64 in there. So like stone or polished deep slate, any item stacks, stacks to 64 is fine. You wouldn't want to put ender pearls in here. That's going to mess it up. Ender pearls only stack to 16. Also, make sure whatever you put in this slot, just as a, a good practice, that you name it in an anvil. So take the whole stack, put it in the anvil, and name it to something, whatever, right? That way, you don't use something like stone. You mine this up. It goes into the system. It drops into the slot, and it starts to mess your system up, okay? But going back to those sub to prowl diamonds, just, just be smart. Use those sub to prowl diamonds. Make your system work a lot better. I, I promise. Scout's honor. Next, we're going to put the item in here that we want to filter. Now, there can be it can be any like stackable item. Non-stackable items will not work. So any stackable item, as you can see, just because we have some items in here right now, we already have one redstone signal. This one is lit up. This one is not. OK, so let's say I were to, I don't know, put a half a stack of stone in here. Look, now we have one, two lit up. The third one's not lit up yet. So if we put nine more items in here and get ourselves to 41 stone, that is the last amount that we can put in that we only have to lit up. So what's going to happen? This part's the important part. Hope you're paying attention. So if we go ahead and we drop even one more item in here, what you're going to see happen is this is now the redstone signal is going to get down to here, which is going to turn that torch off. Like we said, that torch turning off is going to turn off this repeater. That repeater turning off is going to mean no power is going to this block. No power going to that block means that this hopper is unlocked. And with that hopper unlocked, it will pull items from this hopper. And it always pulls from the first slot first. So as stone comes in, in this case, stone or whatever item you're using, as stone comes in, it keeps coming out. So it will sit at 42 items until that item stops coming in and then it drops back down to 41 like it's at right now and the whole system locks itself up, right? So I could take these 23, put it in here. As you can see, we're sitting at 42. Those items, they're going through. You see them popping in? And then once it got back down to 41 again, the whole system locked back up. And those items, they came all the way down to the bottom and they're sitting right here. We got all of our stone back out. This item sorter, or I guess you would probably call it, it's, I guess it's item sorter, right? It's item sorter slash item filter. As you can see, it's small, it's compact, it's simple. It doesn't cost you a lot of resources and it is very reliable. Every so often you will have an item that does not get caught up by the system. It can just happen for various weird reasons. Also, I just noticed, I don't know why these two hoppers are facing down. They should not be facing down. They should be facing over like this. So how do you easily build a lot more of these? Well, it is, it's so easy. Let me show you, let me show you, right? So we just need to repeat this, what we have here all the way down. So what you can do is you can come over. I recommend with all of your higher up blocks. So this, 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 this and this, why not, right? Bring those all the way over. I don't have anything in these middle ones, so I can go ahead and just knock that out so I can get up here. What we can do is we can get ourselves some more redstone dust. We can get our comparators out. We can go comparator, comparator, we can come over here. We can fall down, comparator, comparator, comparator. Redstone dust, just paint it all the way across, just like that. I'm down underneath. 
Torch, 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 torch. Repeater, 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 repeater. Bam. We just did six of them that fast. And in case you're looking at this and you're wondering, Prowl, all this redstone is crossed. This doesn't look good. I don't like the way this looks, Prowl. It's okay. Because as you can see, there's a two redstone signal coming out of this, right? Because it goes one, two. But it's also going one, two. It doesn't matter when you have multiple things that are feeding the same redstone signal. It does not add to it. You see, I put some items in there. This is still one, just like it was one when this one was bleeding over. The highest signal that this will ever get to is three. So since it can only ever get to three, then that means it can only get here. One, two, three or one, two, three three it can never get to this one it'll never bleed over now there's a specific reason why i use these items here because there's another way to do this let me show you you could put your items in like this right 11 11 11 11 straight across and then when you have one item in it's good you have a second item in that one comes out that sounds more efficient right because what if you because you don't want to have 41 of fish or bones or whatever trapped in here, right? So a lot of people like to go this route because it means you don't have as many items caught up in your system. But there's a big, big problem with this. Let me show you. So I'm going to just temporarily, I'm going to put some blocks in here, 37. So we have 37 and we have all of these sub to prowl diamonds. So what happens if this thing overflows somehow? It gets more items in it than just the one. What happens if it gets a whole stack full of items in it? Well, let's just throw a whole stack in and see what happens. The signal is so strong, it bleeds over to that. So look, those items are now coming out. That's not good, right? And if this one stays like this too long, what's gonna happen is these are gonna come out as well. That's really not good. So then the whole system breaks. So do not do it this way. Don't do it this way. Do it like I showed you before, where you have that plus the 41 here, it will make it so your system cannot break if it overflows. Listen to me, people, I'm telling you, do it this way. To make this whole setup work, I did have to move my uh, hopper minecart unloader, which I, I'm just now finishing doing. Um, if you wanna see how to build it, you, I would say you could go to the last episode, but it's actually super easy. All you have to do is you have the uh, railway come down one block level and put two powered rails on top of two hoppers. The first hopper faces into the second hopper. The second hopper faces out, which is actually gonna face out this way to connect into our system. Um, whenever there is an item inside of this hopper, this comparator turns on giving this block power this block having power actually turns this torch off this torch being turned off turns off this redstone dust which means that these rails are turned off when these rails are off the hopper minecart sits here it doesn't go anywhere and then whenever the hopper minecart empties and there's no longer items inside of this hopper that means that the whole thing turns on just like it's on right now and the hopper minecart goes on its way so basically full hopper minecart comes in it gets emptied, it goes back out, nice and simple. And then now that we have uh, all of these hoppers facing into each other, these are now sending the items that we're gonna get out through the system. They're gonna get here, they're gonna go down into this hopper and into that system that we already made. But I also need to expand this system because I want more storage in this. I don't wanna have to empty it out frequently or for it, for it to get full really fast. So we have this area here. I'm just gonna do the same thing I did over here, over there, exact same thing. And these hoppers that I have going like into the wall right here, I'll just extend them over. So it's all gonna work the exact same way. Okay, now that this side is in, I've decided to make these, oh, I need to take these out. I decided to make these last two non-filtered. So what we're gonna do is these first three, we're gonna put cod in those. So just quite simply, I just put a stack of cod, put a stack of cod and put a stack of cod. These next ones, we will do salmon, salmon and salmon these next three on the other side we will do bones bones and bones and this one right here since we won't get a ton of it we will put ink sacks and then anything else that's not part of the system that comes in here like say leads because the wandering trader spawns in there or somehow drowned gets in there zombie flesh and copper and that sort of thing right any anything else 
that happens to get in there will come through here. This will also serve as an overflow. So let's say I get full on salmon or cod, right? Or bones, any one of them. If I get full on one of these, it will then go into these, which is good. We have a little bit of an overflow to check, but we got one more thing I wanna add in because what happens if the whole thing fills up? I like to protect myself. So we're gonna build a little bit of overflow protection. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to make a trash can. What a trash can does is takes any items that do not get filtered through slash when the whole system fills up and items make it this far, it's just gonna simply throw them away. It's gonna get rid of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a dropper, we have right here, we're gonna place a dropper right there. We want to make it so anytime an item is inside of that dropper, that it's gonna go off. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a uh, comparator right here that's gonna tell us whenever an item is inside of there. We're gonna put a repeater right here because we don't want a weak signal just because one item is in there. We wanna make sure we have a stronger signal to go through. We're gonna loop around, go back to this and hit the button and click on the comparator and put it in subtract mode. This is gonna make a clock. So what'll happen is just anytime there is a single item in here, this redstone signal is going to constantly repeat around very simply to make it so it actually sets off this dropper. We just need to power this block beside a dropper like that. Boom. Now, anytime items go in here, items are going to come out. They're going to shoot out forward just like that. And then just to decorate things up, make it look nice and pretty. First of all, we need to destroy the items. So bucket of lava, bam. Then we want to go ahead and we're just going to put glass right here. Glass, 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 glass. Maybe we'll pull up like another one of these right there. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Or maybe, maybe instead of that there to complete the whole look of the area, maybe we just do that. Now it's kind of like it's blended in, but it, it's there. It looks kind of cool. I like it. And then to finish things off, we just need to come up here and we just need to connect everything over. Oh, already had a way up apparently and to connect it over. I'm just going to run the hopper over by holding down our crouch button clicking until everything is connected. So now when an item goes in here, here, we'll, we'll just sacrifice some stone and we missed it all, but you heard it go off. It all went down there and it got destroyed. Now we're ready to hook this thing up and then get to doing some decorating. Actually, I think technically everything's already hooked up. We just need to place our minecart down. So let's actually see this thing in action. Put our minecart right here. Hop our minecart. It's going to take off. Gonna, oh, let's get closer. It's going through. Picking up items. We should see the, yep, see them disappearing. Picking up all of our items. Let's go back over and uh, meet the hopper minecart when it gets back. Here it is. It just got back. It's now dropping off a whole lot of stuff. Can I click on this one? Yeah, I can. So you can see items are flowing into that hopper. And then once this hopper right here empties out, it's all flowing through here. Everything's going through our system. You should see different bits of redstone cutting on here and there. And if we actually go and just take a look, we have cod, we have uh, salmon with a hopper that was in there. We have bone with some stone and we have, oh, did I mess this up? It, boom, okay. Now that'll work properly and all of our ink sacks will come. There we go. Now our ink sacks are in here. And if there's anything extra, it'll drop into these, which we have nothing extra. I'm getting really tired of that. So the plan here for how I'm gonna decorate things it's, it's going to still fit within theme. So things like the stripped, uh, stripped spruce logs, you kind of see like Blue Jay used a lot of that. I don't want it to look overly different from what he did, just so it all kind of goes together. But I also do want to use some of the things that kind of make my civilization special and the fact that we're going to be using brighter colors for things. So stuff like uh, warped wood or crimson wood and that sort of thing. So I'm not quite sure exactly how it's going to look yet, but I'm just going to start throwing some blocks down. Make things sort of look like Blue Jay's side first and then see what I can do to change and accent things to make it my own. And may I now say mission complete. It looks so good. I'm so happy with how it turned out. We got that little bit of flair that kind of like represents our civilization separate from Blue Jay's. I even put some like warped uh, stems uh, back there, the, the warped block. 
warped, warped log, whatever you want to call it. It's technically a stem. We'll call it a log. Uh, we added in some item frames to designate, designate our areas. As you can see here, we got cod, we got our salmon, we got our bones, and we got our ink. We got our miscellaneous things that drop into the system. Apparently, this thing doubles as wandering trader farm. That's perfectly fine with me. And it it just it turned out so good. I'm so happy with it. And even our little trash can. I think didn't I show this in the last clip? I probably this you guys saw this in the last clip. But I'm happy with how it looks too. It turned out amazing. And as far as I'm concerned, that's it for the episode. So I appreciate everybody hanging out again today. If you did enjoy this episode, you have to hit the like button. It's required because hitting that like button will let people know that you like this video. YouTube analytics picks that up and recommends it to more people. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I don't know what you're doing. You should probably click that subscribe button. It's another requirement of watching the video. <laughs> Thank you so much again. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.